All right, all right, we are back. Good morning again. It is just a couple minutes past 10 o'clock and we are so thankful that you have joined Miss Pat and I because it is time to start something brand new. Spiritual warfare, right Miss Pat? Correct. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to give you a chance to get in, to go ahead and get on and to get settled down. Make sure you got something to write on, okay? Because you're going to need uh, a journal. You're, you're going to need something to take notes on. Um, and while you're doing that, I want to encourage you just real quick to go ahead and hit, let's hit that share button, okay? Let's, let's get this dude out there uh, because we want to make sure that we are sharing this with our friends and family. Uh, Sandy Armstrong, good morning. Good morning, Annie Norman. So good to see you. Sweet lady, good morning, Denny. Uh, all you ladies that are jumping in, please make sure you say hello so that Miss Pat and I will know who all is hanging out here in the classroom with us. And remember, hit the share button, okay? Hit the share button. There's Pam. Good morning, Pam. There's Jesse. Good morning. Boy, it's just like a slot machine. It's just ching, 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 ching. I love it. I love it. Uh, there's my bride. She's back there. She's working, actually, right. back here. Uh, and Mary Weddington, I guarantee you, is either watching, listening, or, or she listening with Denise. Uh, they are uh, they're doing some, quite a bit of stuff here in the church today. And uh, I'm so thankful for that. And I, guys, all I'm doing is sharing, and you got a chance to do that. So hit the share. You know what to do. Hit the share <laughs> button. Judy Davis, good morning, Miss Judy. So glad that you are back. Yes. Uh, I am running just a hair behind. I was on a lengthy phone call, and I could not get off. And so that is what has pushed us just a couple minutes late, and I apologize for that. So. Uh, are you guys ready? Are you guys ready to get in? I know Miss Pat is over here chomping at the bits. Just really, really quick, I want to kind of go over things with you. Uh, if you are on, please say hello, because that way we'll know who all is uh, chit-chatting with us. And then uh, uh, make sure that you have got something to write on. Uh, Miss Pat has already shared with me this morning that she's going to be going back to Ephesians 6, right? And guys, it, 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 uh, let me just say this. This is going to parallel our Wednesday night Bible studies so well uh, as we are looking at the whole armor of God. And so what I'm going to strongly encourage you to do is to take these lessons with Miss Pat and go back, if you have not already, and, and pick up and watch our intense studies on Ephesians, especially in, in the chapter 6. So that you can put them both together because it's literally it's like a hand in a glove, and right. it is literally like a hand in a glove, and, and and you can you can benefit by putting them both together. So that's what we want to encourage you to do. Uh, Ephesians six is where we're going to be camped out in, and so uh, if everybody, if you're on, if you got your coffee, you got your Bibles, and you've got something to write on, then uh, I'm going to open us with prayer, Miss Pat, and then uh, we are going to get started. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and pray, folks. Father God, we are just, we're just overwhelmed, Father, by your presence this day. And Father, we know that, that you have directed us to these passages of Scripture in Ephesians and this topic of spiritual warfare for a reason, for a purpose. Father, because the, the most probably every one of us are struggling with it, but yet we probably don't want to admit. And God, help us to just take this not just as tools in the tool belt, but Father, as something that we use every single day of our life. Father, I just, I lift up Miss Pat to you. Father, I pray that you will just wrap your arms around her, that you will speak to us through her. Father, that we will hear your words. Father, that we will hear your encouragement, that we will hear, Father, your words of preparedness for battle. God, I love you. I thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, now let me turn this thing right on around, and I'm going to just do this real quick. And so y'all ready for a little ride? Here we go, and there we go, Miss Pat. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, and I thank each one of you for joining me this morning. Uh, as we know, Satan is our enemy. He, he is subtle, he is clever, and he, he, his job is trying to tempt us to sin and render us ineffective in sharing, uh, serving God and living for him. Mm -hmm. He tries to deceive us into embracing a carnal, self-serving lifestyle. As we, but as we grow in maturity, we learn to use God's grace rather than try to win the battle on our own efforts. And of course, like he said, it's uh, this week is uh, our 
month, uh, quarterly thing is spiritual warfare. This week is the reality of spiritual warfare. Ooh, the reality of spiritual warfare. Right. How great is that? Okay, I'm going to read the first uh, Ephesians 6, just 10 and through 12. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So that tells us right there we're not fighting flesh and blood, we're fighting those spirits. And you know, Satan is very clever. He he is he is puts things out there that we that will tempt each one of us. He knows what tempts us, and that's what he uses. And he, um, but we need to recognize. The main thing is we need to recognize Satan's lies, mm -hmm. and we need to recognize that he is deceptive, that he does not tell the truth, and his attacks are. We're gonna have we're gonna have them daily almost. I mean, you know, and we have to understand that. And Satan defeats us and robs us of what God wants for us, the victory that we have. He has already given us. Mm. Uh, and that's where the real battle lies, like I say. Uh, only when we resist and walk in victory spiritually are we equipped to deal with outward manifestation so strong in the world. Right. Now, and, and even then he's got here, Satan's working overtime. He does. Boy, he does. does. I mean, true. he is so much. And we need to understand there is a warfare. And we need to be equipped. Yes. And of course, this as we've been starting studying on Wednesday night, the armor of God is what equips us and keeps right. us strong. But the first thing is we have to recognize that it, he is here and he does what he does. And his purpose, and you know, he his purpose is to take us away from God, and, and that God is not glorified. God, our purpose in God is to, for Him to be glorified, and we need to understand that we need to follow God's purpose and not Satan's. Uh, of course, Romans eight twenty five tells us to be conformed to the image of Christ, and so you know, Satan tempts us to sin in order to keep us from glorifying God. Yes. This enemy is wanting to rob God of his glory in our lives. You know, Miss Pat, one of the things that I have always said that you can you can can narrow down the focus of Satan to two things. Number one is to keep the lost people lost. And to keep the Christian as far from God as he can. Right. Uh, hey, the battle is unavoidable. The enemy is invisible, but he is very real. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. Absolutely. And you know, God saved us by grace, so we will conform, be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Not just so we have a home in heaven. You know, not just so we have the assurance of a heavenly home. And uh, Ephesians three sixteen describes. God's desire that we be strengthened with power in inner man through the Holy Spirit. Yes. Then he says, Satan tries to destroy anything that glorifies God. That's right. That, that's, yeah, that's it. And you know, God's glory comes from Christ dealing, dwelling in us. Yeah. And us reaching out and doing things for him. Absolutely. And that's, that's how it is going. And then John 15, 4 through 5 says we are to abide in Christ. Mm -hmm. Abide in Christ. Live the Christ-like life. Be filled and controlled by the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. And God's desire in each of our lives every single day, all the time, every action and attitude is for Christ to be glorified. That's the goal right there. That's it. And, uh, of course, uh, Psalms 46.10 says, God wants the nations and all people of the world to praise him and exalt him. Satan doesn't want God to be glorified among the nations, so therefore there's a war there and we're in it you know with him and uh, that if we follow Satan then we are not fulfilling the mission that God has given us to do exactly right. and so you know uh, and God uh, Satan doesn't want God to be glorified in any of our lives like you said he doesn't want us to serve God That's right. so he does whatever he can to separate us from God 
One thing we need to realize is we have, as Christians, have many blessings because we are in Christ. John 14, 7 says we're born again believers, and that means we're children of God. Mm -hmm. John 15, 11 says joy. It gives us joy. Acts 1, 8 says it gives us power and strength. Uh, Philippians 4, 19, uh, 17 says it gives us victory. Luke 10, 19 is holy. He gives us holiness and blessings. And all this accompanies our salvation. That's right. And we're, you know, it means that we're in Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're to stay. You know, that's just like, a, okay, that's just like you pack your bags on a trip. Right. And when you get to your destination and you open it up, then you've got what you pack, but then you've got all of these extra freebie goodies that God just snuck into your life. And he says, here, by the way, this is yours right. for this journey you're on. Yeah, yeah. But uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 sums up what God has done for us. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old has gone and the new has come. Oh, my goodness. You know, and so we need to embrace that and realize. And we need to see these blessings in our life. Yes. You know, we have, uh, talking about joy, uh, you know, we, we use, I've heard it said, uh, Jesus, others, and yourself last. Recently, I heard it said, Jesus over you. Oh. So, you know, Jesus okay. is over you. He's watching over you all the time. Wow. He's there. So wow. that's a new way of looking at that okay, verse. Okay, that's good. Jesus over you. Right. Okay, that's, that's good. Instead of holiness and goodness that comes from his presence within us, we struggle with temptation, lustful thoughts, self-gratification, as if, you know, nothing has been crucified with Christ. And when this is the pattern of our life, and we're in contrast with what God says, he, he's given us, who's deceiving us? Is it, our, is it our weakness or our lack of faith? Mm -hmm. Or is it we have an enemy? Right. You know, we have an, and we have to recognize we have an enemy, enemy who wants to defeat us. He wants to deprive us of all that, could, that would bring glory to God in our lives. Right. We have to recognize, like I said, we are in a battle. And I think that's the main thing about this reality. We have to recognize we are in a battle. Why is it Satan is able to get a foothold in our thoughts and feel and feed us discouragement and defeated attitudes? You know, and, you know, he's, it's, he gets us, what he does is he gets us to focus on our own comfort and our own needs, or nurture a sense of entitlement, oh, yeah. and turns us from being obedient. Well, and we're living in an entitlement society. Oh, we are. Holy yeah. cow. And that's right. That's Satan's thing right it, here. It is. Yeah. It, it and is. we have to recognize. And it's because of our self-centered nature and what we want and what we feel like we deserve. And, it, you know, so therefore God is robbed of the glory. Oh, yeah, uh, Miss Amy, we, we know that God will fight our battle if we just keep still. That's true, very true. This, we yeah. have to be still, you know. And we seldom think, you know, this is a, 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 a warfare, but it is. You know, a lot of times we, it's so normal to be on, have conflicts and have all yeah. this stuff that we don't think it's a war, but it is, and we have to recognize that. Oh, yes. Satan is deceptive and he works in secret and darkness. He distorts the word of God and he deceives us. We need to realize that his deceptions and lies cause us to accept lies less than what God has given us oh, yes. and to discard the promises that God would enable us to walk in victory. Pam says, spiritual war takes place in heavenly places. The way we can access or tap into the full armor of God in heavenly places is through prayer. Right. Prayer is like our internet access, but it always works. And of course, Dennis, you know, he being Satan, we got to understand who the enemy is. Right. got to right. understand the enemy. Right. We have to understand the enemy. Uh, John 3, 20 through 21. Where are we at? Back here we are. Uh, let me find it. <laughs> Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that a man 
it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, you know, this kind of puts uh, Satan's deeds in perspective. Yes. If we're, he wants to keep us in darkness, he doesn't yes. want us to come to the light and to accept it. Scripture over and over again alerts us to the fact that we are to be sober, we're to be serious, we're to be diligent, and we are to be alert. Mm. The mm. Bible tells us our enemy is like a roaring lion striking, seeking to devour us. He's always there, seizing every moment, every opportunity he can. But we as a Christian are to be enlightened regarding his tag. So we're to understand what his tactics are and, and, and we're to stand firm. We're to be alert. We're to resist him. You know, it says resist him, resist the devil and he will flee. And he will flee, that's right. You know, so, but Satan will cause us to disregard all this that God has done for us. And he, he calls us when there's a warning in our mind about when God's trying to warn us that, he calls it, he kind of distracts us from that. He says, no, nah, not really. You know, yeah, he, he yeah. just he makes us disbelieve God. That's right. In other words. That's exactly right. He keeps, keeps us from being diligent. I mean, when we have a, God prompts us to go speak to someone. Oh, you don't need to do that today. Or, you know, so he calls, calls us not to be diligent and yeah. do what we need to. Uh, he keeps us from recognizing what is happening when something is contrary to the Spirit of God and the Word of God and to faith in what God calls mm -hmm. us. You know, and you know, do you have you found yourself when you need to go to pray mm -hmm. and you're praying and all of a sudden all these other thoughts are come to to your mind and it's, that's Satan, I think. It's distraction. It is, Distraction. Okay, you know, you know how I like to describe this, Miss Pat, and that is when I'm praying, and I, I and normally I like thirty-seven things going on around me when I'm studying, when I'm doing different things. Okay, but when I'm praying, I, I like to be zoned in. E, okay, Danny, Saints' favorite tool is distraction. Well, you're so right there, Miss Danny. But when it, it, imagine somebody like like me who needs it, needs the distraction to do my normal stuff, but when I pray, I have to be zoned in. It's like when I go to pray, it's like me then stepping onto the midway of the state fair. And there's all kinds of things. There's rides, there's games, there's carnival bockers, and everything and their brothers trying to draw my attention away mm -hmm. from what I really, really want to this. see. And that's right. it. Let's see, Pam says the enemy is a master at choosing the right bait to snag us. That's He's teaching sure. his strategy is the first step in defeating him. Yeah, I mean, I mean if you can be, and are you like me, do you like to be that focused in that corner? Right, right. And I, then all of a sudden, everybody and their brother wants something from me in my mind. Right, right. And, uh, or the phone or, or, the, or something, just exactly. somebody be at the door, or something and, got yes, me. Uh, the dog will bark, or, <laughs> or, or, you know, the, the uh, you'll hear something outside, right. or, you know, the, a car will come in, a car horn down the street. Right. Something yeah. triggers it. Oh. And so what he, he gets us to do is we're no longer communicating with God. We're right. thinking about all this other stuff. Right. And even though we have come to communicate with God mm -hmm. and be with God, he uses that distraction to draw us away. Every time. And you know, a great scriptural passage here that, that just kind of backs this up is when Jesus was walking on the water mm -hmm. and Peter wants to walk right. too. Well, you know, everything's fine. Okay, Peter, hop out of that, that boat. And, you know, Peter, you know, jumps out there. And Peter is just trotting across those waves in the middle of that storm. Storms of life. And everything's going fine. And then all of a sudden, what does Peter do? He takes his eyes oh, off Jesus, Jesus. And he sees the distractions around him. And what does take place? Old boy starts to sink. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's our prayer life. That's, uh, that's what happens, yeah. Some scripture, some scripture that tells us about the reality of spiritual warfare is uh, 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 through 5. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretense that sets, up, sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to God. So there's your, I mean, that's, these are to help us overcome 
Yeah. Oh, that's it. Uh, we, we've got a great conversation going on on our own okay. uh, and, and on. That's why we need prayer. Talking about distractions. Right. Uh, that's why we need prayer. Prayer warriors. Right. We can't do it by ourselves. And so I'm, I'm going to stop right there. And so let, let me just ask this question. Uh, we, I'm distracted when I pray. You're distracted when you pray. Obviously, all the folks that's watching with us are distracted when you pray. And I love what, uh, what, what Annie has said here. And I said, what if in my prayers, I'm praying for you to not be distracted? And what if I'm praying for, like Miss Annie, I'm praying for Denny or Pam or Denise or anybody. And then at the exact same time, when you're praying, you're praying for us. That's not a good thought. To be distracted. That's that's really, really, really good. good. Yeah, we do. We really need good. to pray for each other. Yes. Then he says, I'm way too easily distracted. I pray about it every day. And then I love it. angels and monks. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So so maybe, maybe that's a new part of the prayer right. strategy. Right, is to pray for or not to be distracted. Not to be distracted. And, right. and call out by name. In other words, whoever God puts on your heart right then, I'm going to pray for that person not to be distracted in their prayer life today. Right. Right. That's good stuff that's right good. there. Yeah. All right, another scripture is uh, James 4, 7. Submit yourself then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. I said that. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. And then 1 Peter uh, 5, 8, and 9. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. We all have that same That's thing, right. You know, and we have to realize that Satan's goal is, is to oppose anything that God wants done. Right. In the church, in the Christian, the extension of, of God's kingdom, in individual Christians' lives, you know, he doesn't want anything to for God to be glorified, and so he does whatever he can to stop it. That's right. Satan is behind the spiritual warfare, and we need to realize that. He's, he's behind discord, he's behind discontentment, you know, carnal living, worldliness. The goal is to deprive God of being glorified in our lives by defeating us and robbing us of everything God has given to us. You know. Say, Christ has come to give us victory. He has given, this is, God has given us everything we need to fulfill his calling and to live for him. That's exactly right. We, we don't need nothing. We have the Holy Spirit living in us. And the same Holy Spirit is living in me that, that walked in, you know, that Jesus said. So, uh, but God, I mean, Satan robs us of the joy and peace that God has given us through doubt. He destroys the sense of power we should have to witness and serve God. He deprives us of the holy life and blessing that we have in Christ by deceiving us to embrace that which is contrary to what God wants. So, you know, whatever, if it's God wants it, Satan's against it. That's right. And he's going to do everything he did, does, needs to, to cause us to doubt. Absolutely. When we come to Christ and are born again, Satan has lost our souls, but he does all he can to defeat us, rob us, and destroy our witness mm. and our victory that we already have in Christ. He lies, he deceives, he works through our minds to distort God's word or God's truth. He convinces us to see circumstances from our perspective rather than believing what God says. Yes. What we are to do is to think God's thoughts Accept God's truth, which is his word. See reality in terms of what God tells us, not what Satan says. And be aware of Satan's schemes. He, his, he, schemes to, uh, he seeks to entice us to choose his way while the Holy Spirit is still us for us. You know, if, if God can get us distracted in our prayers. You mean Satan. Oh, yeah, if Satan can, thank you. If Satan can get us distracted in our prayers, then it's almost like a kink in the armor. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is. And, and I like what Pam, what Pam has just said. Yeah. Uh, uh, prayer gives divine power and, and activates your spiritual armor. It's, it's Satan's kryptonite. Right. Uh, if, if we can be distracted in our prayer life, 
it's it's destroyed to everybody. I mean, it's it, it's uh, it's a battle of wounds. Right. At that point. Right. So we, right. we gotta be yeah. yeah, we gotta be mindful of that. Uh, you know, and so many times we make the mistake of believing Satan has the power that he does not have. Yes. We really give in to an inclination to sin and embrace worldly carnal values. Satan has such a power, that Satan has such a power is an illusion fed by his deception. The Holy Spirit lives in each believer. He is the Almighty God living in us. Jesus Christ to whom all power and authority have been given. So, and we need to realize Satan is a created being. He's a fallen angel. He does not have power in the physical realm except as he is granted by God. You know, he can't take our lives. That's right. But, unless God says so. Right. He doesn't have the power or the liberty, liberty to destroy our lives. Right. And God is sovereign over the universe and Satan is only a messenger, a fallen angel. We need to, real, we need to realize right. who's in control. That's right. His only power and authority are in speaking to our minds mm -hmm. Hence, his strategy is to deceive us so that we will embrace something that is not true and something that is contrary to what God says. And he can't do anything unless God gives him approval. Yeah, that's it. Just that's like it. he did with Job. That's it. You know, and we, we forget that. Yes. We forget yeah. that. The major part of victory in spiritual warfare is awareness. Yes. Well, let's just, let's just call it what it is. Satan's a loser. That's true. Yeah, for sure. He's a loser. He he has lost battle. Yeah. Now, there and there's no possible way that he can win. Right. It's it's impossible. The battle has been won. And so what he wants us to do as believers is to convince us that he's winning. Mm -hmm. And that is a lie from pits of hell. Right. That's just that's right. Right. Uh, you know, and we we have to recognize and understand the reality of the battle. On a day by day basis, it person. happens every day. I mean, it's constant, and more times than once a day. You know, okay. it's constant. And being perceptive and aware of the schemes and strategy of our enemy, then we are able to resist and stand firm right. and do what God says to us. And you know, we have everything God's word tells us we have. He has given us. In Christ, we must not allow Satan to deceive us or convince us otherwise. We declare, we have to declare Christ has won the victory, and we walk in victory. We walk in victory. Right. That's it. And the question I have is, are we aware of Satan's power and presence, or do we dismiss it? And that's a great question. Are we aware of Satan's power, power and his presence? Or do we just basically dismiss it? And so, uh, guys, y'all, y'all are watching. Love your thoughts on this. Great comments, by the way, that are just oh, continuing yes, to come you. through. Uh, are we aware? Do are we consciously aware? Right, of it? right. Okay. Are we consciously aware of it? Do we acknowledge it throughout the day, or do we just go, eh, it's okay, and, and go on about our business? So, uh, love your thoughts, folks. And I think, uh, I, okay, it's easy to say, well, it's a day-by-day -day basis. Yeah. Well, I think that's cop out. Yeah. To be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, because if we, if we want to make strides in the world, if we want to be stronger in our faith, if we want to make a difference in the, in the world, then I think we have to be aware. I think we've got to do it. Uh, if we got things going on, if we want to make sure that we're the, the, the man or the woman that God's called us to be, I think we have to be aware of it. I think so. Our enemy Satan is nearby and we need to recognize the darkness of Satan so we can walk walk in the light. Yes. You know, we want we, yes. we have the power through Jesus to be aware and to live victorious. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, Second Thessalonians three three, uh, three calls us to be aware of Satan, but not to fear. God Jesus is faithful and he will guard us. We're not, he doesn't give us, which was, he doesn't give us a, a heart of, or mind of tent, you know, being afraid. That's right. He gives us victory. That's right. And like I said, uh, and I mentioned here about joy, you know, that we say Jesus, others, and yourself, 
but I heard Jesus over you, and I really like that. That's right, I like that, yeah. But, you know, we have to have our eyes focused on where we're going, not the circumstances all the time. Oh, that's right. And well, where we're going is heaven. Well, yeah, we're going to heaven. And, 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 you know, our memory verse for the week. Right. Uh, you know, out of, out of uh, uh, Second Timothy, for God did not give us a spirit of fear, right? but a spirit of power, mm -hmm. and of love, and of a sound mind. Right. And, and so we need that daily in this battle. Mm -hmm. We do. Oh, we man. Do. Okay, the way we overcome fear is to trust the Lord, to have faith in the Almighty, to use His Word as our sword, mm -hmm. realize He is our strong tower, mm -hmm. He's, we're safe when we're in the shadows of His wings, He is our sole shelter, he gives us peace that passes all understanding. So we can, if we will try to stress those things in our life yeah. and remember those things, yeah. that God is here with us. Well, and you, he has given us power. Well, would you read those again? That was, just, that was just so comforting to me, just to sit here and listen to that. Trust the Lord. Yeah. Have faith in the Almighty. His word is our sword. He is the strong tower. We are safe in the shadow of his wings. He is my soul's shelter. We have peace that passes all understanding. Mm -hmm. And you know, and those are things that we we can claim and we mm -hmm. can hold on to because God is there. Mm -hmm. God never leaves us. That is just like that 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 comfortable sweatshirt that I had on last night when I was at my house. <laughs> it, it was just so comfortable and so warm. It just and so. Uh, it, it just, it's almost like it eliminated everything else around. Right. And, and that's what God is. God is that, 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 uh, and you can use the term blanket or sweatshirt or whatever. Right. But it's knowing that nothing else matters. Right. That, you know, fear has been conquered. The grave can't hold us now. Right. That Satan can't defeat us. And that's that's what it is. It's, it's just, and it's knowing that the, the battle is won. I love Dean. <laughs> nothing's nothing's meaner than a sore loser. <laughs> and, and he is he, he's, 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 a, sore he's a sore loser. Right. Uh, and, and and we have to understand that. Uh, now, does that say that we live with a smirk on our face? No, no. no. But it means that we live in confidence. Right. Uh, and, and again, and, and I come back to this memory verse. God didn't give us a spirit of fear. Right. He gave us a spirit of power. Right. Spirit of love. And it was sound mind. And we have to understand that. Mm -hmm. We have to, and this battle, the battle is won, but we're willing to lay down and be defeated. Right. There she's saying that. You know, we don't, we don't claim that battle, the victory. Mm -mm. And so no. that's, uh, next week we'll talk about, uh, let's see what it is. Yeah. Oh, this is good stuff right here. The folks. nature of our enemy which we kind of covered in this one, too. But, sure. But anyway, we'll... The nature of enemy in today is the reality of, of spiritual warfare. Of the warfare. Holy smokes, this is good stuff. All right, guys, thank y'all for joining us today. Uh, whatever you do, don't miss this. This is going to be a fabulous teaching series. And make sure that you go back and to, to pick up all of this on Ephesians 6 that's on our Wednesday night broadcast. Make sure you go through there and yes. you're on... Uh, they're here in the archives uh, on the videos on this page, or you can go to our YouTube channel. That's Ridgewood Baptist Church, Fort City, Arkansas, and you can check out all the videos there from our Wednesday night broadcast. You definitely need to do that. Okay, Miss Pat, any other word? That's all that I have today. Okay. Just everybody, stay strong. Yep, stay strong. Stay, stay focused. Strong. Mm -hmm. Stay focused. Stay confident. Right. Pray for others right. for their distractions. Okay, I really like that. Yeah, I, I, I like that. I really, really like that. Yeah. Uh, and just encourage one another. Encourage one another to understand that the battle has been won. Yes. When you see a brother, when you see a sister that's struggling, guys, the battle's won. We've got to get that message out. Right. We've got to get that message out. All right, well, I want to close this in prayer, and then we're going to call it a morning. Father, we, we thank you so much for your word. Father, we know, we know the battle is won. It is one, it is over, but that, that dirty dog just wants to, <laughs> to just ruin us yes. every day. He wants to lie to us. He wants to deceive us. He wants to distract us. 
And Father, I'm, I'm just asking you right now that you just, just peel back the layers of reality to let us see who yes. the enemy really is, that we can identify him, that he can no longer hide, that he is called the liar, he is called the yes. loser because that's exactly what he is. Give us the spirit of power, the spirit, Lord, to identify and to know that we are overcome. And we know, Father, that, that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And Father, we are more than conquerors yes. through you, Jesus, through you. Yes. Father, watch over us this day. Protect us. Father, you are so good to us. Yes. So good to us. God, give us somebody to tell today about yes. you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. I'll see you next week, Ms. Pat. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us.